Well, grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. It's Reformation Day! Yay! Hey guys, if Lutherans can't get excited about it, maybe the que maybe what we should be saying is is instead of uh, an exclamation, it's a question. What is Reformation Day? Well, technically speaking, it's October thirty first, uh, but we always do it the Sunday before that because the next following Sunday is what we call All Saints Sunday, where we remember those who have gone before us in the faith and now live uh, forever eternally with God and glory. Uh, but Reformation Day is an anniversary where we remember how back in 1517, a monk turned priest who was a professor at university nailed 95 theses, 95 points of debate to the church door in Wittenberg, Germany. It's a day where Luther sought not to break up the church, but to reform it, to correct where the people of the church have gone astray in the teachings of Scripture and our Savior. And the argument mostly centered around this thing, this word called justification. So that's the word of the day, if you will. That's the Reformation word of the day. Justification or justified. Now, I know that probably the only way that you've come into the word justified is when you're trying to do a left align or the right align or the center align in your word processor, right? You're trying to justify it that way. That's not what this is. And the word justified probably doesn't come around in dinner conversation or while you're out running errands. But this word does dwell in our day-to-day -day living. It has to do with messing things up and being forgiven of them. Most of us have a pretty good idea and some pretty good experience when it comes to messing things up. Amen? Amen. This morning I was just trying to take a picture and I already broke something in the sanctuary. So if you get bored, look around, see if you can find it. Okay? So what does it mean? How are we justified? How are we made right again? How are we forgiven? How are we justified? If you're asking that question, relax, you're in good company. Because that's exactly the question Martin Luther was asking too. Martin Luther was so crazed at trying to make sure that he was forgiven of every single sin, he drove his confessor nuts! Because he would go around, Martin literally would take a piece of paper and write down every little thing he thought he considered he did wrong. How many of us do that? How many of us are glad we don't do that? And sometimes I think we do it more than you think you do. Because we kind of keep that list in our heads, don't we? We know we've done it. And what's worse are the times where we mess up and we don't know that we've done it. And that's why when we do our confession and forgiveness, we ask God for forgiveness for things that we've done and left undone, for things that we know about and the things that are only known unto God. So we ask for justification. And I like to think of being justified like this. It's just if I'd never done it. Just if I'd never done it. That's an easy way to remember it. And when Luther was seeking justification and seeking forgiveness, he looked to the Bible. He said, what does the scripture say? So he read the Bible. He discussed it with other Christians. He prayed about it. And this is what he came up with. So if you've got a pencil or pen around, you maybe want to take this down. Or I'll just post it online later and you can take it from there. <laughs> Luther came up with what we call the five solas. The five solas. They are sola scriptura, which is scripture alone. The Bible is our highest authority. Sola fide, faith alone. We are saved by God's grace through faith alone, which goes into the next one. Solo gratia, grace alone. We are saved by God's grace alone. Solus Christus, which means that we are saved by Christ alone. Jesus Christ alone is 
our Lord and Savior and King. Soli Deo Gloria, to the glory of God alone. We live not for, our, for us to be famous. We're famous enough because God knows us. We live for the glory of God. Now, the logical question you might be asking yourself at this point is, wait a second, Pastor Aaron. You said that there are five things, five solas, and sola means alone. How can five things be alone? Excellent question. I had to take a whole seminary class on that to figure it out. So let me explain. What we join Luther in saying is that these individual solas lead us to justified living as well as sanctified living. Sanctification means now that we have been made righteous in God, how do we go on continuing in the Holy Spirit? How do we go on living in Holy Spirit-filled life? For instance, let's go through them. Sola Scriptura, Scripture alone. Now, I don't know about you, but I read a lot of stuff on social media. And by the way, Twitter is so not true. A lot of times, there's a lot of stuff out there that people just put out there that is not true. It's just flat out factually wrong. So how do we know what we can trust when we read whatever it is that we read? Well, by putting it up against the, the Bible. The Bible is our highest authority. The scriptures are ultimate and most trustworthy authority. For the, They are the source and norm of our life. They are there for the faith and practice. Now, this doesn't mean that the Bible is the only place where God's truth can be found. But it does mean that everything else we learn about God and in this world, all other authorities, should be interpreted in the light of Scripture. The Bible gives us everything we need for faithful living. Every word of, wait, confirmates, how many books are there in the Bible? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Everyone else answered but you. No, you guys be quiet. This is the quiz. Okay. How many? You guys just totally stole that from everyone. All right. Um, there's, and, uh, and, and how many are in the Old Testament? Wrong, pastor's kid. All right. You did answer. You put yourself out there. I give you credit. Louisa? 39. Louisa, you are correct. Huh? I'm glad you're good at math. Okay. So, and then how many are in the New Testament? 27. Again, right, Louisa. Will? Gonna have trouble here, pal. All right. So, Will just looked at me like, Louisa? Awesome. So, remember, the easy way to remember that is the formula 3 times 9 equals 27. 39 27, add them together, 66. Ah, it's not the first time you've heard. Anyway, so every word in the 66 books of the Bible is the inspired word of God by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit helps us to understand and obey Scripture. And we as Lutherans, we are particular in saying that Scripture is both law and gospel. Scripture points out our sin and tells us that we are in need of a Savior. And by his death and resurrection, Jesus Christ is that Savior we need, and whom we now give thanks and serve in both duty and delight. So that's sola scriptura. Sola fide and sola gratia, that's a twofer, okay? Because they're juxtaposed. They go together. So here's the bad news. We as humans are captive to sin, and we cannot free ourselves. Because of our brokenness, we confess that we cannot by our own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ our Lord or come to him. That's the bad news. Here's the good news. The Holy Spirit has called us by the gospel, enlightened us with his gifts, sanctified and keeps us in the one true faith. In the same way that he calls, gathers and enlightens and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. God graciously chooses to give us new hearts so that we can trust in Christ and be saved through faith alone. Again, we are saved solely through what Jesus did. 
We are saved by Jesus Christ's life, death, and resurrection and Christ's merit alone. We're not saved by what we do. I'm sorry to say it, my confirmand friends, you've spent the last three years with me. That does not save you. Although you might have asked for salvation at some point in that time. But what we do doesn't earn us brownie points with God. God already did what needed to be done, and now we live faithfully in thanksgiving as we go out proclaiming Christ in thought, word, and deed. All of this is summed up in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. You can read it for yourself. And that's good news, that we're saved by what Christ does, because if we're saved by what we do, I will tell you what, I can't even do chores right, let alone look for my own salvation. So thanks be to God that God already did the work needed to be done. And there's even more good news. When we were faithless toward God, God is still faithful. We can stand, only stand, before God and His grace and the righteousness that God gives us. And when God sees us, God doesn't see us. God sees Jesus Christ because Jesus is the great intercessor. He steps in for us. So, in that point, that's one of the reasons we wear white robes or, or white gowns when we're baptized because it symbolizes that we have put on Christ through the water and the word of baptism. So that when it comes to our judgment day, God doesn't see us. God sees the perfect righteousness of Christ. Which leads us to sola Christus. Luther summarized all of the gospel. He says, if you're looking for the spark note, cliff note version of salvation, the gospel in a nutshell, look no further than John 3.16. And you all know it, right? Show, uh, show the confirmants how much you know this. Ready? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Perfect. Great. And if you said it different than the person next to you but it means the same thing, great. Awesome. We are saved through Christ alone. That's an easy one. And then there's the final one. Soli Deo Gloria. Glory belongs to God alone. A quick story. Some of you may uh, have known Johann Sebastian Bach. Maybe you know his music. Many of you might not know that he was actually Lutheran. Hey, very good. Everyone has a process. Even back then, when Bach was writing, he had a process to writing. Be it from writing to music or, or our routine. How many of us have a routine, a process when we get up in the morning to get to here right now? You have to be the first one to the bathroom, right? Or the one to brush your teeth in a certain way at a certain time. For Bach, before even writing one note, Johann carefully formed the letters JJ at the top of every page. And with that, music began to pour from his soul unto the page. When he was finally satisfied, he wrote the letters at the bottom of the page, S D G, Soli Deo Gloria, for the glory of God and God alone. He hoped that when his music played, it would point people to God. You see, my friends, God is not a means to the end. God is the means and the end. The goal of life is to give God glory and glory alone. 1 Corinthians 10.31 says, Whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it to the glory of God. And I know we're Lutherans, but we can look at the Westminster Catechism. The chief purpose of human life, according to that, is to glorify God and enjoy God forever. And we don't have to wait until we die to have that kind of life, to have that kind of enjoyment, because life with Christ today brings that joy, brings that fulfillment, brings that life. So those are the five solas. The five things Luther said points us and tells us about justification. Well, hey, look. There's five confirmation students right here. Oh, that's funny how that worked out, isn't it? All five of them, like I said earlier, have had three years of instruction with me. I did the math. You've spent approximately 840 hours with me. 
on Sunday nights for two hours at 32 weeks every year. We took summers off because I need a break. Um, we also spent uh, winter retreats and week-long summer camp at Lutheran Memorial Camp, learning and laughing and exploring the Bible, small, Luther's small catechism, and the topic of discipleship. Honestly, truly, it's been amazing to get to know each and every one of you. There are five of you and there are five solas. And while sola may mean alone, I want you to know you are not alone. Look around you today. Look around and you see what I see. You're not looking around. This is not a difficult instruction. <laughs> I said look around. Now you know how I feel. Okay, great. Um, you are surrounded by people who care about you. People who God has put into your life to reflect God's love for you in different ways. God has put these people in, the, in your life to give you that love, to be proof of God's love in your life. Your family, your friends, God's people here at the church. Your parents who have brought you to every single one of those classes mostly. They have taken the time out of their lives to fulfill the promises they made at your baptism. Your parents and sponsors who stood up and made promises before God that they would lead you to this moment, to this morning, full of faithfulness, attendance, prayer, and love. Your other family members and friends who also love you so much have encouraged you in many ways, making the time and effort for you to be here today. And this congregation, the people of God assembled here when you were baptized, they made promises too. They promised to love you. They promised that their offerings would help to support you in your Christian education. They said that they would pray for you. They said that they would do whatever they could through offerings, prayer, time, and so much more so you could be here today. You are not alone. And after today, none of that changes. What does change is that faith is now your responsibility. It is your promise, not anyone else's, but your promise before God and everyone else here that you are making. You are saying, you and you alone are saying that Jesus Christ is your Savior and Lord. You are promising to live among God's faithful people. That means go to church. Come to the Word of God and the Holy Supper to live with and in accordance to the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to nurture your own life in faith and prayer, to trust God, to proclaim Christ through word and action, to care for others in the world God has made, and to work for justice and peace. These are the promises made on your behalf at your baptism. These are your promises that you make today. But this profession and promise of faith is not just for these five alone. It's for all of us today. As a couple may renew their marriage vows, let us all today be renewed, refreshed, and dare I say reformed in our own faith journeys. Louisa, Ryan, Caden, Jake, Will. It's been a pleasure and I hope that this is the not the last time I see you and your families. Especially you, Caden. <laughs> He's my son. Okay. We love you. I love you. God loves you. May we all continue in the faith and love that we share. And may we all be formed and reformed in an act of faith by a faithful community, and by the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, Amen. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. As you
Um, so if you will, take those out and follow along at this time. Uh, just so all of you know, uh, the guy next to me, who I really look up to, uh, <laughs> this is Matt Pittman. He is our... <laughs> wonderful job with our youth. He does a lot of things with the little ones, and then he skips confirmation age and leaves that to me. And then uh, he takes on our high schoolers as well. So Matt does a great job, and we feel it's important for him to be up here as well uh, during this important time. So dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for these people, one with us in the body of Christ, who today are making public affirmation of their baptism. Today on this commemoration and celebration of the Reformation, we confess our faith in God the Father, the one who created the universe and is still creating. Our faith is in Christ, the one who died and rose again for us and for our salvation. Our faith is in the Holy Spirit, the one who calls us to and strengthens us for holy living each and every day. This is our one God, who is still creating, still forming, and still reforming us all. These persons have been instructed in the Christian faith and desire to make public affirmation of their baptism and confess their faith in Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord. Please come forward as your name is read. Louisa McGeorge Bolzinius. Ryan Evelyn Hicks. Caden Michael Lane. Jacob Daniel Rumble, William Scott Rupert, dear friends Louisa, Ryan, Caden, Jake, and Will, we rejoice that you have chosen this day to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, our Lord, as the Savior of your soul and the Lord of your life. We also rejoice that you have chosen to assume greater responsibility in the life of our Christian community and its mission in the world. The faith you profess today is the same faith your parents confessed at your baptism. From this day forward, you are an adult in the eyes of the church. Coming to age and the point of your faith formation where you are accountable for the confession that you make today. As this is Reformation Day, we are reminded that today is not only a graduation from church. Rather, it is a reformation, a springboard into a new chapter in your walk with Christ, the one who always walks with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these sisters and brothers whom you have made your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called them to yourself, enlightened them with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. Congregation, please rise as you were able. All of us together now, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I, I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I, I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. And he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
Let us pray for those who are affirming their baptism and for all the baptized everywhere, that they may be redeemed from all evil and rescued from the way of sin and death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit may open their hearts to your grace and whole truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That they may be kept in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That they may be sent into the world in witness to your love as they join in our mission of worshiping God, following Jesus, serving others, and making disciples. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That they may be brought to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Compromise, go to position two. <laughs> the parents, siblings, and baptismal sponsors of these young men and women, please come forward and surround them at this time. Do you, the fathers, mothers, and sponsors and siblings of these young men and women, having raised your children in the Christian faith and nurturing them in the life of the church, support them in their desire to claim these responsibilities as their own? If so, answer, we do. We do. Will you, moms and dads, brothers and sisters, and godparents, continue to support them with your prayers, your insight, your love, and your encouragement as they continue to grow in faith. If so, answer, we will. We will. We will. With calm strength and patient wisdom, you have brought your loved ones here today. At this time, Matt's actually a sponsor and my son's done. What we invite you to do is an ancient biblical practice, and that is the laying on of hands. So if you could, take one or two hands and place them on the confirmation student. And turn the page as we now bless them with these words of love. May God bless you today. May God guide you every step of the way. At your baptism, we promise to raise you in the Christian faith, to teach you the foundations of faith, to place in your hands the word of God, and share with you the love of God. Today, take on these responsibilities as your own in your journey of faith. But the love of God we will always share. God bless you, child of God. Amen. Sponsors and family members, you can go back to your seats. Confirm hands, position one. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? To live among God's faithful people. To hear the word of God and share the Lord's Supper. To proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed. To serve all people following the example of Jesus. And to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Jesus Christ is my Savior and Lord. Therefore I do and I ask God to help and guide me. Jesus Christ is my Savior and Lord. Jesus Christ is my Savior and Lord, therefore I do, and I ask God to help me guide me. Jesus Christ is my Savior and Lord, therefore I do, and I ask God to help me guide me. Jesus Christ is my Savior and Lord, therefore I do, and I ask God to help me guide me. People of God, do you promise to support these sisters and brothers and pray for them and their continued life with Christ? We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. 
Let us pray. Gracious Lord, through the water and the spirit, you have made these men and women your own. You forgave them all their sins and brought them to newness of life. Continue to strengthen them with the Holy Spirit and daily increase in them your gifts of grace. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. This time I call forward Louisa McGeorge Pesenius. Stir up in Louisa McGeorge Pesenius the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua 1. <coughs> right. Ryan Evelyn Hicks. Stir up in Ryan Evelyn Hicks the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of the joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Guide me to your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior and my hope is in you all day long. Psalm 25. I know. Caden Michael Lane. Stir up in Caden Michael Lane the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4.13. Jacob Daniel Rundle. Stir up in Jacob Daniel Rundle the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of the joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. If you search for me, you will find me if you seek me with all of your heart. Jeremiah 29, 13. William Scott Rupert. <laughs> Stir up in William Scott Rupert the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Psalm 143. Let us rejoice with these sisters and brothers in Christ. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. Turn around and face the These young men and women have now affirmed their baptism. They begin a new journey of faith today. We join with them in celebration, yet this is only one step on the journey of a lifetime. May we encourage them in the steps to come. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ, I now present to you the 2019 Confirmation Class. We got a lot to do, and I know the service is long, but I gotta tell you, this class is special. They really are. Um, Louisa and Ryan 
the fact that you're sitting next to each other, Louisa is the loudest person. <laughs> and Ryan is the quietest person. <laughs> Um, I always, I always know what Louisa's thinking uh, because she, she tells me. Uh, I never know what Ryan is thinking uh, because she looks at me and she just kind of speaks to me with her eyes. Even right now, she says, "Stop talking to me." <laughs> it's great. It's great. Um, you know, Caden, Caden. Uh, well, I mean, he's great. Pretty um, uh, freshman girls out there, uh, but. Uh, uh, but Kaden, seriously, he's wonderful. Um, I, from between boxing of all the things and uh, and playing Call of Duty with you at home, uh, we we do a lot of things together. Um, Kaden is an, is an amazing young man, and uh, uh, at the school he uh, used to go to, he used to take Bible class. Um, so if I ever everyone was stuck on a question, uh, we everyone would look to Kaden, except for how many books are there in the Bible. <laughs> You know, Jake, Jake is an amazing young man. Um, ever, honestly, Jake, the questions that you articulated in class, I'm like, are you in seminary? Like, I mean, am I wrong on that? Like, oh my gosh. Like, totally. I mean, Jake, they're, they're wonderful, profound questions, and I encourage you, keep asking. Keep asking those questions, not only of yourself, your family, but also of God, um, because God is, is awesome, and God will answer those questions. And Will, my gosh, if I ever need a laugh, dude, you're my guy. Uh, uh, I won't say class clown, Scott, uh, but... Uh, <laughs> Bethany hits him. That's not okay. What wonderful examples you have, Will. Um, no, but seriously, um, you know, having to grow up with Maggie as your sister, <laughs> you have overcome so much in your life already. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, And I have a microphone, so enjoy that. Um, anyway, you're great, Maggie. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, but honestly, Will, it's been a, a joy to have you as well, and, and to all of you. It's a, you've been a wonderful class, and I really look forward to continuing our mission of worshiping God, following Jesus, serving others, and making disciples with you. Okay, congratulations.